Hey guys, what's up? So first off, sorry for the lack of videos recently. I've been working on a lot of kind of new and different things, namely a lot of animation, which can be seen on my Instagram. Specifically, I've been playing around a lot with physics simulations, basically mimicking aspects of the physics of our world in a virtual environment. One example of this is that I've been working with fluid simulations. It's quite cool to make simulations like these as they can splash around and kind of melt and make these really weird and organic forms. This last part is what drew me to try 3D printing a single frame of a fluid simulation. It seems like it'd be a pretty difficult challenge, but that's kind of what I do on this channel. And the results are pretty cool. You get these really beautiful and smooth shapes that can be fun to make and decorative as well. So today I'm going to walk you through how to 3D print a fluid simulation. So, to make the fluid simulation, we're going to use a program called Blender. It's a free open source program that's not too hard to learn. However, for this tutorial, you will need a bit of familiarity, so I've linked some tutorials in the description that should catch you up to speed for what you'll need to know for this tutorial. So, first thing we're going to do is we can just press A and then X and delete everything in the scene. With everything deleted, we can do Shift A and add a cube. You'll want to press S to scale it and scale it by a factor of five. You'll probably want to view it from the front in orthographic mode and it's also useful to press Z to turn it into wireframe. Next go to the physics tab and select fluid and set the fluid type to domain. What this will be is the entire area that our fluid simulation will be contained in. Next, we can add an icosphere and move it up a bit. It doesn't really matter how much for this demonstration. Then again, go to the physics tab, select fluid, but this time for the type, we're going to set it to fluid. This will mean that it'll create a ball of fluid in this shape. So now here's where we get some choices for our uh, fluid simulation. If you select the box and go down to fluid world, you'll see that we have some settings here for viscosity, basically saying how thick and viscous the fluid will be. So with these numbers here, the base value and the exponent value, those affect um, the viscosity, as I said, and will make a thicker fluid when they're lower values and will create a thinner and more runnier fluid at higher values. For right now, we're just going to keep the values as is. So we've set the boundary for our simulation and we've set an object to be the actual fluid. But if we run through the timeline here, you'll see that nothing's actually happening. And that's because we need to press bake. So I just pressed bake and you'll see that this percent bar has started uh, increasing at the top. It's starting to create the simulation. To kind of see the fluid, we can switch out of uh, wireframe mode by pressing Z. And if we scrub through the timeline quickly, we'll see we kind of have some fluid moving around. So the simulation's finished baking, and if we press the play button, you'll notice that it'll play our simulation. We can orbit around and see how it kind of drops down from the sphere and splashes around. However, what you'll also probably notice is that it's kind of like low poly-ish, which is cool. However, not super realistic for actual fluid. One way of fixing this is with the resolution value over here. Right now it's set to 65, which is pretty low and will mean that it has a pretty low resolution of polygons in the mesh. However, we can't just arbitrarily increase this as what will happen is it'll create very fine details in the simulation. But that still doesn't solve the problem of it being kind of low poly and rough. So what we're going to do is we're going to add two modifiers. The first one we're going to add is subdivision surface, and you can leave the two values as is. The next one we're going to add is smooth. 
we're going to set the factor to 3 and repeat to 2. And as you can see, that already largely fixed the roughness problem. And if you play through your animation, we can see that it's a lot more smooth, less choppy, more organic looking, and nice. Now it's at this point that we want to choose the frame that we want to print. So I'm going to scrub through the timeline over here, and yeah, I'm going to say I like this frame right here. So what I'm going to do is apply all three modifiers by pressing apply. It's important that you do it in the order of the fluidism modifier, then the subdivision surface modifier, then the smooth modifier. And now if you scrub through the timeline, you see it's no longer the animation, it's just this one frame. Now we can zoom out a bit and we can select the icosphere and delete it because we no longer need that as we're not going to be printing it. Now, you might find in your simulation that you have some floating bits like we do right over here. Now, we obviously can't print those, so we're going to get rid of them. You can do this by pressing tab to go into edit mode, pressing P, and doing separate by loose parts. Now, if you press tab again, you'll see you have two separate objects, or in this case, two separate objects, one for the main fluid and one for the floating bit. So we can select the floating piece, press X, and delete it. So now to further prepare it for printing, you may notice that fluid doesn't exactly have a perfectly flat bottom. It kind of hangs down a bit. So we're going to fix that by, we can add in a cube, scale it up by just a large amount, and move it so that the top face is cutting through the object where you want the base to be or the printing surface. So you can just zoom out a bit and move it up. I'd say that looks about right. So now what we can do is we can select the fluid, go to add modifier and select Boolean. And then under object right here, select the cube. And then for the operation, select difference. If you then press apply, select the cube and delete it, we then see that we have a flat bottom for our fluid object. From here, we're ready to print it. You can select it and go to File, Export, STL, and then open it up in your slicer and get to 3D printing. So, although this may not seem like the most practical project, it's an interesting example that, at least for me, makes me think a lot about what other unique and novel design methods for 3D printing are out there. It also gives me ideas for 3D printing other physics simulations, like soft body simulations and particle simulations. I'll have links to everything seen in this video, along with a Thingiverse page where you can download all the shapes I showed, in the description below. If you like this video, you should know what to do, and if you want to provide feedback or give me ideas or just talk to me in general, leave a comment. If you want to subscribe and follow my work into the future, you know what button to press. I'll see you later. XYZ Aiden, out.